Thousands of years ago, Alexander the Great, a Macedonian Hellene, crossed the Hellespont to conquer the entire Persian Empire. During his campaign, a minor general named Ptolemy first appears in the siege of an Aegean port, and was under the command of one of Alexander's most trusted generals. When he had the general killed after a plot was uncovered, Ptolemy was elevated to a personal bodyguard of Alexander. After the young king died, Ptolemy led a contingent of generals who sought to partition the newly created empire. His group won out, and Ptolemy got his first choice of Egypt, beginning the Ptolemaic dynasty. Beginning in 323, his 38-year reign was at first haunted by Perdiccas, who sought to keep the Alexandrian Empire together. He was regent for Alexander's baby, and his base was in Babylon, and was like a vice president for each new state. He died only two years after Alexander. Yet the Antigonids of the north were troublesome afterward. Luckily, though, he temporarily got aid from the Seleucids. He also made Egypt the best center of learning here. His Ptolemaic dynasty would have their capital at Alexandria, to be closer to their homeland in Greece. The Ptolemies also rebuilt many old Egyptian temples, and under the next king, Ptolemy II, a great lighthouse was built which would be one of the seven wonders of antiquity. That king would rule for 36 years and started the Syrian wars with the Seleucids. Ptolemy II traded across the world, fought many battles, and increased the knowledge in Alexandria. But the Syrian Wars, named so as it took place in the region these Greeks called Syria, started because of a border dispute the two empires had, but didn't address because their first kings were super nice. But as soon as word of a new Seleucid came to Egypt, Ptolemy II pounced on the new and feeble reign at the very capital of Damascus. He was undeniably successful, getting Aegean land. But this Persian, Antiochus I, after facing multiple other threats to his reign, put his foot down. He made allies of those foul Antigonids who had retreated to Greece. The Syrian wars officially began in 276 when Antiochus wintered up north to fight raiders. The Ptolemies took Damascus. Antiochus left the raiders but in turn beat the Egyptians and the Seleucids also began a siege to reclaim that now Ptolemaic port. The siege persisted and also the pharaohs began following the Egyptian right of marrying his sister. Incest aside, they ruled jointly and she with the navy were vital for Ptolemaic success in this war. With peace and more Aegean control in 272, Ptolemy II would try to defeat Antigonid Greece in 267, after he funded a half-successful attack on Greece, but also after his genius wife, Arsinoe II, died in 270. Even with much local aid, the war would fail because it was too far for him to be fully involved. The Antigonids would do a second Syrian war with the Seleucids from 260 to 253. But Ptolemy II got Antigonid peace in 255 and separatism troubled the Seleucids. The pharaohs after 246 weren't as good at diplomacy as Ptolemy II, but the king of Persia also died in that year, and civil war followed. Ptolemy III supported the side until 241, gaining some land, ending the Third Syrian War, but civil strife in Seleucia went on. Ptolemy III was quite competent, but Ptolemy IV's rule was mixed. Antiochus III made an ill-prepared attack on Egypt. The resulting Fourth Syrian War around 218 would be a small victory, but his incompetence in Egypt would earn him an assassination in 205. The next kings would start their reigns as kids, so Antiochus III would do one last Syrian war around 201, but he did more campaigns. In 195, Judea was lost, and by then, the pharaohs had retreated to North Egypt and Cyprus. The next decades had civil war and weak pharaohs. Egypt became a Roman vassal in 80 BC, but let's talk governance. What is said next largely applies to all of ancient Egypt. 
Most of the Nile was owned by the state, so basically, if you wanted to farm, you had to rent land from the pharaoh. On these pharaonic parcels, you would be given seeds, told where to farm them, and when to do it, after a flood period. When harvest time came, you'd give some of your harvest along with the same number of seeds that you were originally given. If you failed to do this, you'd probably be fined, and if you wanted to do any one action, you'd plea your case to the government. Also, just so you know, law was very flexible here. And with business, you'd pay for a license to sell your product, then sell it to the government. You'd buy everything that you wanted from the government. With a king's death in 51 BC, Cleopatra VII, yes there were seven Cleopatras, was queen along with her younger brother, slash husband, Ptolemy XIII. She spoke Ethiopian, Hebrew, and other languages, and was the only Ptolemy to speak Egyptian. Her brother forced Cleopatra to flee to Roman Syria in 49 BC. She gathered an army, and the next year started a civil war. But when in Rome, Julius Caesar, that's how you pronounce it, challenged the authority of his compatriot Pompey, and Pompey sought refuge in Egypt, Ptolemy XIII had him executed. He hoped to make friends with Caesar doing this, but Caesar wanted to kill Pompey himself, so he sided with, and, erm, um, with Cleopatra. In 47 BC, the civil war ended, and Cleopatra would give money to Rome in thanks. She also mothered children. Cleopatra went to many Egyptian festivals throughout her life to make herself beloved. She had a peaceful reign, but it was a little frightful to be in Rome when Kaiser was killed. But this didn't affect Egypt itself. Then Cleopatra and Kaiser's best bud, Mark Antony, allied, and, erm, um, and she continued being great, even purchasing some Syrian land. This was until Octavian slash Augustus may or may not have found Antony's real will near 33 BC. This controversial document made it so Rome would deprive Mark Antony of rank and declare a war on Cleopatra in 31 BC. The same year, at Actium, saw Octavian's naval triumph against her combined fleets, and the enemies of Rome retreated to Egypt. Mark fell on a sword, he was carried to Cleopatra, and died. He was buried, she did suicide in 30 BC, ending Egypt but birthing an empire.